There we go. Okay, so that's recording. Um, so you should be able to see the PowerPoint. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'll go through um, bits and pieces of this. The, there's some tasks to do, um, a couple of like bits of writing during the, uh, the lesson. There's a bit of maths that we're going to go through as well. Um, and then um, there's some tasks to do afterwards, okay, um, during the week. So the, the topic is the rest of this chapter um, in the book that we've been looking at around biodiversity. Okay, so we kind of jumped away from this. Um, I didn't do it while I was off because I, it was difficult. It was, it was kind of the hope was that I would be able to come back and, and we would mm. do this <laughs> face to face. But obviously that, that's not possible. So we're, we're doing it this way anyway. Um, so first thing is, so as I say, the title is, is about biodiversity and um, the first lesson is around the importance of, of biodiversity. So looking at these two pictures, um, which one, I mean, hopefully the answer is fairly obvious, but why would you think one has more biodiversity than the other? What is it about it? How would you explain one over the other? Uh, Do you know what we mean by biodiversity, first of all? Yeah, it's like the uh, amount of different species in an area or something Good. similar. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a picture of the rainforest, okay, um, and then we've got a picture, obviously, <laughs> of school um, with, and you've got some different species that you can see. Um, where do you think the where's the greater biodiversity? Uh, well, I mentioned in the rainforest. Yeah. Okay. So why why would we say that? I mean, you, you've kind of mentioned already about the variety of species. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the numbers of different species, the amount of variation that we have, the amount of diversity, that we have, um, diverse species that we have, um, is greater obviously in somewhere like the rainforest than in somewhere like a school field or whatever. Okay. Um, so there are some questions. I'm going to show a video um, now. I was trying to work out the best, best way of doing this. I have put these questions up on Teams as well. But it might be worth just making a quick note before I show the video of how we're going to answer some of these questions. So, first of all, what make it makes an ecosystem? What I think what I'm going to do is rather than answer these now, okay, because I'm recording this lesson for everybody anyway, is these are the the questions um, to think about. Okay, we'll discuss them as we go along. But mm. if you are watching this on playback or any time anyway. You've got a list of these questions that are now loaded onto Tim Teams, and they will be on Go for Schools. So you can answer these questions as you go through, go back and watch the video. So if you, Amber, if you want to come back and watch the video, um, that's also obviously fine. Um, you can do it that way. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to show the video. Okay. Um, Oh, let me go back for a second. So what we're thinking about is what are the features of biodiversity? What makes what? Why is the Amazon rainforest such a biodiverse area? Okay. Um, what does what do we mean by interdependence, genetic diversity, um, species diversity, that kind of thing? Okay. So we're not going to try. I don't think we'll try and answer these questions now. I'm going to let you try and answer those questions afterwards using the video. But we'll watch the video anyway. I'll play the video now so that it's. Um, on this on the recording and I'll post the link to it as well now I'm hoping this works can you hear as well uh, I don't think so okay hold on a sec let me see can you see here yeah, you can't hear that video that's going to be um, okay what I'll do is in that case because I was just thinking that this probably won't play you can see but you probably won't hear so yeah. i'm going to i'm going to post the link to this video okay obviously alongside so you'll have the video to watch and the questions to do okay um we, we can still think about what biodiversity is okay so we'll skip on for now um what we're, we're going to because we're going to go through um some definitions anyway okay so the first thing for you to do is um we're talking about biodiversity at various levels now when 
you did you would have studied biodiversity a little bit at GCSE level, okay, and talked about how a ecosystem is particularly diverse, as we said, because it's got lots of different species. But actually, biodiversity can be considered at several different levels, okay. So there are some definitions that we need to write down, okay. The first of these is habitat biodiversity, and that tells us about the number of different habitats that we have in an area. OK, so if you think about an ecosystem, think about a set area, for example, a rainforest. OK, within that rainforest, there are going to be various habitats OK, that are exist within there. There'll be areas in, within the um, upper canopy of the trees. There will be um, the leaf litter. There will be in, maybe in some streets, some of the streams, the rivers, that kind of thing. So loads of different areas. OK, and the habitat biodiversity is the number of those different habitats. The second thing is genetic biodiversity, um, and that is basically the variations within a species. OK, so there might be there might be one particular species within that area. OK, but there might be lots of variation of that species. You might get lots of different types of, of species. OK. Um, or sorry, lots of different very lots of different alleles within that species. Okay, so that's that's looking more at, at a species rather than the, the habitat and the ecosystem itself. And then, as I say, the third is this is actually called species biodiversity, and that's the number of different species, i.e., what we call species richness, and the abundance of each species in an area. So how even what is what is the spread of each species as well so how many different species are there and how widely spread are there how is there kind of lots of one species and, a, and of only a few of another or are there i don't know 10 different species and there's all there's a similar amount of all of them so those are the three levels that we're interested in okay so let's think about habitat biodiversity first. OK, remember, habitat biodiversity is the number of different habitats in an area. So if we look at these two pictures, which area do you think has the greater habitat biodiversity? OK, so I'd like if you're watching this on playback, I'd like you to write down which one you think and give a reason why you do why you think that. OK. Abba, what would you say? Uh, I imagine A. Okay. Because uh, with B, you've got a very sort of cold, flat, frigid area. Whereas in A, you've got water that seems fairly livable, but you've also got like the next tier up of trees and bushes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, in A, we've got, as I say, we've got different areas. We've got the river itself so we would have species that live on the riverbed we would have species that live in the river itself those are two different habitats we've got the river bank another one and we've got like you say the trees and the bushes and things like that with b with um mm. presumably it's, it's either the arctic or the antarctic um there's not a lot of difference in that habitat it's pretty much the same you might get a few you know there might be a bit of difference between the water and the ice, but on the whole, it's, it's not, <laughs> not much variation. Good. Genetic biodiversity. OK, so which population has greater genetic biodiversity? Again, write down your answer if you're watching. Give an explanation. So we're looking at a set. Um, some dogs and we're looking at some sheep it should be fairly clear that the genetic biodiversity is greater in picture a okay they're all the species of dog but there is variation within that species okay with b they're all pretty much identical okay they're not clones but they are there's not very much variation between those sheep Okay, now the one we're really focusing on is species biodiversity. Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on today a bit more. 
Okay, and there's two more definitions, as I said, within that. And I, I've mentioned those already, and you may have written down a little bit about that, but these are the, the full definitions of those. So species richness, okay, looking at that top picture, is the number of different species in an area. Okay, so we've got four different species. Okay, we've got A, B, C, and D that we can see. And the higher the number of species, the greater the species richness. Okay, so the bigger the area, the, the more species we have, the greater the richness. In the second picture, we're talking about species evenness. And so that is a measure of the relative abundance of each species in the area. So how does A, the number of A compared to the number of B, compared to the number of C, and compared to the number of D? And the more similar the population size of each species, the greater the species evenness. So if we have, as I said earlier, um, four different species and we've got about roughly eight or nine um, examples of each within that area, that's quite a much higher species evenness than we'll, if we have four um, uh, species and we only have a couple of some of them, as you can see in that picture. OK, so in that picture, we've got obviously um, tree A. We have lots and lots of it. The other species, there's only a couple of examples. OK, so it has quite low species evenness. Hopefully those are clear. I'll just leave them up for a minute. I need to carry on writing them down. Okay, Amber, have you got that? Yep. Lovely. So, example, okay, as I've just talked through. Okay, so both these communities have the same level of species richness as there are four species of each tree. Okay? Sorry, four species of trees in each. So we've got the same the same level of species richness, but the top picture has a higher level of species evenness because the population are more similar than in the bottom example. So that should be nice and clear. So, OK, another task for you to look at and write down your thoughts. OK, so we've got a wheat field on the left and a meadow on the right. They both have 25 species of plants. OK. So which do you think has greater species biodiversity? Explain your answer. So we're thinking about both of these terms, species richness mm -hmm. and species evenness. OK, and we're thinking, well, we've got a wheat field and we've got a meadow. Where, which has the greater species biodiversity? So I'd like you to write down some ideas, OK, as to what you think, and then we will discuss them in just a minute. Okay, Amber, what are your thoughts? Let's discuss. Um, well, they obviously both have the same like species richness. They've mm -hmm. both got 25. Yep. But I imagine the wheat field has a lot less evenness. Okay, why do you say that? You obviously got a lot of the same plant also next to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, which is what like, you can quite clearly see that it's a large area, whereas on the meadow you've got a lot of variety of plants that you can see already. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, as you say, the, the fact they've got 25 species each, okay, means their richness is the same, but we can see from the picture that the wheat field is predominantly wheat, okay. Um, there may be small amounts of those other species, but they are very much in the minority, whereas in the meadow there's clearly a much e more even spread, so there is much higher evenness, uh, species evenness in the second picture. Excellent. OK, hopefully that's clear, everyone. So um, just to kind of put this into a bit of context, OK, as to why this is important. 
So, um, and why we need to measure biodiversity. So this is something that is obviously becoming more and more important now, okay? Um, and it provides a baseline level of biodiversity so that the effect of any change to an environment can be measured. So, for example, if we look at coral, okay, um, it's been measured and analysed for a, a number of years, and we can see, you can just see in those pictures, the changes that have happened, okay, in both the species richness, okay, so the number of different species, and potentially the species evenness. So is, is one particular species able to uh, um, uh, sort of survive the, the devastation that's happening to coral reefs, um, which is quite clear, or is, you know, is there things that um, are being affected in, in certain ways? Um, and actually, this is really important now. So when any new project is undertaken, any kind of big building project happens, um, something called an environmental impact assessment has to be done. And it, that's to assess the potential effects on biodiversity. So whether that's a housing project, um, so all of the new housing estates that are built around Haverhill are always have to undergo one of these impact assessments, um, building, as you can see, a bridge across the road. Anything that um, will be built on a greenfield site, okay, will have an impact assessment done. Um, so they have to sh they actually have to show that they will result in a net gain in biodiversity. Okay, um, so it says here, mandating biodiversity net gain will ensure wildlife thrives at the same time as addressing the need to build new homes, whether it's through planting more trees um, or creating green corridors. Developers will now be required to place the environment at the heart of new developments. Uh, this new approach will not only improve habitats for wildlife and create healthier places to live and work, but is central in our ambition to leave the environment in a better state for future generations. So this is important, okay, and it is being taken into account. Um, now, this is going to be your um, task that you've been set to do after this lesson, okay? Um, so. There is more information about this task will be on Go for Schools and on Teams, but basically I'll just go introduce it now. Um, so it's been decided that Cambridgeshire needs another zoo, and it's up to you to select a suitable site from a shortlist. So you've been given a, a, a number of different sites that might be possible for that zoo to be located. So you need to explain the reasons for your site selection, considering what you know so, so far about biodiversity. Um, Later on, when, as we go through this topic, um, we're going to talk about conservation. You're then going to ask, be asked to select some species for your zoo. OK, so we're going to carry this on a little bit. Um, but there is um, this impact assessment task document that, as I say, is, is um, going to be should have all the information that you need for that task. OK. Right. So that's that's your kind of um, independent work. Um, we're going to talk a bit more now about how we calculate biodiversity, how we actually put a number on it. OK, so whenever this kind of impact assessment is done um, or if we're looking at changes in biodiversity over time, we need to be able to calculate it. And so the simplest way is to calculate species richness. OK, so remember the, the uh, diversity in the number of species that we have. OK. But, as it says here, a community dominated by one or two species is less diverse than one in which several different species have a similar abundance. OK, so there is something that we use to be able to measure both. OK, and it's called Simpson's Index of Diversity. So, and it looks like this. OK, so the equation is written there. OK. Um, and what it is, is basically the sum of the number of organisms of all the species and the num number of organisms of a particular species taken into account. I remember we've done some stats previously looking at um, a variety of different um, um, sort of methods, so standard deviation. This is just another one of those statistical tools that we can use to be able to give us some data. OK, um, so. You don't need to, um, you look, I think you don't need to learn this equation, but you need to obviously be able to use it correctly. Um, so make a note of, of the equation so you know what it, uh, it says. 
So D is the index of diversity. Um, we get a number. It's equal to one minus the sum of a particular species divided by all of the species squared. And it always gives us a value between zero and one. And the higher that value is, the closer to one that value is, the more diverse the habitat. OK, so the more uh, the greater the biodiversity within that habitat. OK, we're going to look at an example all right, that we're going to go through. And in a minute, I'm going to give you an example to have a go at yourself. Um, just um, and I'll show you a couple of methods doing this is a couple of videos that we've got on here so let's imagine we've got this this fairly straightforward example we've got three different species of flowers in this habitat white ones red ones and blue ones okay um, the next slide is going to show us how to calculate the index of biodiversity of diversity for this habitat okay so it is it is best to do the whole calculation in one on a calculator you can actually go through and program your calculator to do the whole thing in one go. OK, and there's a little video um, to show you how to do that. But um, I'm going to play this video, which uh, this is put together for you, which goes through the steps OK, to show that you've checked. You, this is always a good idea to check your answer is correct, but it also shows you the process. So I'm just going to let this video play. OK. Um, and I'm going to talk through what we're doing. So obviously the equation, um, we always write down first of all so we know what we're doing. So as I said, at the top of the equation, the little n is the total number of organisms of a particular species. So in this case, we've got three different species. So there are three different um, organisms. And the bottom N, the, the capital N, is the total number of organisms within the habitat of all the species that we can see. OK, so we're going to go through the steps one by one. There's, a, there's three steps to follow. So the first thing as it says here, is calculate n, calculate the total number of organisms of all the species. So species A, which is the white flowers, we have five. Species B, which I think was the red ones, we have three. And species C, the blue ones, we also have three. So therefore our n equals 11. So step two is to calculate this part of the equation, okay, the, the n over n squared for each of those three different species, okay. So for A, we know we've got 5 over 11 squared. We can do that calculation and we end up with 0 0.2066. For B, we know we have 3 over 11 squared. That gives us 0 0.0738. Um, and obviously for C, which is the same number, we get the same answer. So those are our three numbers. And if you remember from the equation, what we need to do is sum all of those. So step three is to add all of those together. And plug them into our equation of one minus that number.
So obviously always do the part in the bracket first, and you will end up with an answer of 0.64464. So D equals 0.64 or 0.644, um, but we would normally round it to two decimal places. Okay, so that should be nice and clear for you. Those are the steps that you would take. Okay. Now, um, if you're using a, your, your scientific calculator to do this, you don't need to go through these steps and you can actually just plug everything in in one go. Okay. So I'm going to play this short video, which talks you through it. And it's worth watching this and having a go with a calculator in front of you. Okay. So you can obviously put, we go back through and pause this video and, and check. But this video just shows you very clearly the numbers that you need to put in. So you type in your calculation of two brackets. Okay, then the first is your 5 over 11 squared plus your second, which is 3 over 11 squared. plus your third, which is again is 3 over 11 squared. Finish off with a bracket. That will give you a result, a fraction, which you then convert, and you see you get 0 0.6446. Now, sometimes it might be slightly different because of the lack of rounding when you use a calculator. Um, so this is a more accurate answer, in fact. Okay, so this is... A great way to, to you to be able to do this without having to go through each of the steps. Okay, hopefully that's really clear. Now then, here's another example. Okay, um, I'm just going to let this this play. Okay, because this is another example of doing this, and then after this, there's going to be one for you to do yourself. If you are ahead of the game, you might be doing this along at the same time and you might be able to come up with the answer before the video shows it and then you can see uh, whether your method is correct. So obviously in this um, uh, example, we're looking at five different species, presumably from a pond or a slow-moving river that have been sampled. Okay, and they've counted uh, some water boatmen, some water striders, and a number of different fly larvae. Okay, so there's our four, we've got our four numbers, okay, obviously we're going to add them together. And you'll be seeing why it's uh, obviously a much easier process to learn to be able to do it on the calculator. But we end up with a number of 0.76, okay, so a fairly diverse uh, population, okay. So this is a much a little video to show you again, okay, um, same process, but as you'll see, much quicker.
and there's our result. Rule point seven six corresponds with what we got. Okay. So this is your task to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I would suggest that if you're watching this on video, you stop uh, the video in a moment and do your calculations. Okay, for this. Um, Amber, I'm not going to ask you to do it now. Okay, uh, I'm going to suggest you do the same in a minute as well. Okay, um, but they we've, we've got an, we, again we've got six different species here, and we've got a variety of, of members of, of them. Okay. Also to think about is if we just look at a species, um, an area, or we look at a collection of organisms, can we sort of get an idea for which is more diverse just from looking at them? Um, which one do you think here would be is more diverse? Write down which one you think. So at first glance it may be difficult, but if we look a bit more detail we can see that with A there are some species that are not appearing as nearly as much in species in in uh, side B. All of them are there, but maybe in not nearly as much abundance. But there does seem to be a lot of one species of the frog. Okay, so we would say that A is the more diverse of those two because the the evenness is is better in in side A. So that takes us to the end of that. OK, also your last task after you've done the um, calculation task. OK, there is some exam questions for you to have a go at. OK, so I'd like the order I'd like you to work through is obviously having gone through the lesson, have a go at the um, calculation question, this one here. OK, then have a go at the exam questions. And then you've got the independent work, which is the um, impact assessment task, which is also provided for you. OK, there is an extension task on there as well, OK, which I'm going to leave on and you may wish to come back to and look at during the next few weeks. OK, um, but that is that's on the on the PowerPoint, as I say, as an extension task. OK, um, so that ends the presentation for this week. Um, I'm going to plan to do the same thing next week in our lesson and hopefully um, we'll be able to deliver the same kind of uh, in the same format. OK. Um, let me stop sharing. I'm also going to stop the recording.